Hey, Fitzy here. Back at it again. Another one. I got the transmission fitting. I got the steering column piece made. And this master cylinder put up a fight. I made mistakes and I had to fix them. Stick around. Thanks very much, Jeff. Lovely place, 1969 Yukon. So it's time to get back at this. Uh, in the last video, I turned around and made all this here firewall section and sections over here. And uh, made a section up along here, and of course, a section up here and a section down here. Now that I got all that made, what I got to do now is start fitting all the bits and pieces in it. One of the main things is I got to get transmission fit in there, and I got to get this cut out of here so I can actually get the transmission to fit in there. I can start working on basically the floors and whatever. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to mark this here to cut out for the transmission tunnel. And how I'm going to do that is I have bolts put in here. Moonlight. I have bolts put in down here. Okay. And I'm going to mark the head of the bolt there. And I have this bolt with a nut on the end of it. I'm going to push that forward and square it up. I'm going to mark that there. Okay. I'll do the same with all the other holes. And that way I'll have points where I have all everything marked where the bolts are too. That way I'll know uh, I'm going to cut just a, uh, an oval shaped hole on this here and then go straight down after the bend, right? It's going to be oval to this line here and then straight down. As you can see, I got the points marked where the bolts were to. And then I went down here and I marked the spot down here. And the thing you can see is about a half inch off either side there. And I'm going to turn around and use them for uh, references in the transmission itself so I can actually cut it off. What I'm going to do here now, first of all, I'm going to start taking this all apart. Now after measuring these two points here, what I've after noticing is this entire panel is off center a quarter of an inch. So I know that one side got to be a quarter of an inch longer than the other. So I measured from here, that was a mark that I made, and that was a 12 and a quarter, and over here I weigh 12 and a half. So I got the same distance from there to there. And all I'm going to do is going to go straight down from there. I should lay straight there, have sensible. This one. And we'll just continue on through there, like so. Right. Now from here to here, we have these spots here that we got to deal with. These were the bolts or two. I would like to have them so there's a little bit of clearance on them going into the firewall. Okay, guys, I hope you're sitting down because this is going to be a new one. I use a template. Yeah, that's it. The world has ended. Fitzy has used a template. <laughs> what I went and did here is I had this distance across here. I had an idea how high it had to be. Okay, from these two bolts here. And it had to go crown up small bit from there. And all I did then is I just turned around and I cut this piece out. A square piece out. The full length of that there. Okay. Then I folded it in half. 
and then I drew it over here where I thought it might be and then I trimmed it off now you got both of them the same way I lined that up there and lined it up there and I traced that out and there's my mark okay I don't want to come too much hard and I just want enough clearances from the head of the bolt when the bolt goes in it's going to be going in on a small bit of an angle and then it'll go straight but if it's perfectly straight it'll clear here but it will clear the firewall worse too. It's just a matter of when you want to be able to turn around, just take the bolt and slide it in there. I can probably trim this back again after the fact, but I'm trying to keep this as small as I possibly can because down here, I'm trying to keep as much pedal room as I can on both sides. And I'm just going to cut that straight off there, right? And all I'm going to do here is, uh, like some people say, we'll trim this off and then the, roll it over on the edge and dolly it. No, I'm not going like that, okay? I don't want to disturb none of this here. I'm going to turn around and cut this off here. I'll fit it in the car, make sure everything's all right when I'm happy with it. And I'm possibly going to put some beads or something in it up here somewhere. Along here, just use the bead roller and just do a couple of small beads up here. Usually at the top side here is usually the flimsiest. And a lot of the GEMs just have a, a crinkle going up through here. And uh, I kind of like that look. So I don't know. I might do it. I might not. But all I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to trim this off here. Cut this piece out of it all together. I'm going to go over and get the transmission mounted in the car and uh, get that set up with the mid plate and everything so that way I can test fit this back in the car again and see how close we are to where I want it to go. Yeah, this is going to be a two-man job, getting transmission in, not this Turbo 400. It's not light. I'm here now. I haven't, I haven't got the proper gear for this. Like if I made a transmission jack for this, it would probably work a lot better. I'm just using a regular old floor jack with a piece of plywood. And what I went and did then is I used a couple of straps wrapped around the roll cage here just to steady it up. I was afraid it was going to fall a few times. But I got it all mounted up in place there. Everything's fine, right? I can take this out of there now. And straps are all just, I'm just leaving them there for now. I bolt them loosen up. She's all bolted up there and she's all bolted up down here. So, but here's what we're up against over here. And you can see here, this is what I'm after. I can reach down here now and I can take that bolt out, but I think I'm going to trim it back a small bit more. Right? I'll put that bolt in through there and then there's room there that I can tighten it up with a wrench. Right? But I may just trim this back a small bit more, probably a quarter of an inch, just enough to make it that much nicer. Because it do come up as, it'd be nice if I had a little bit more room there to be able to get at it, see? Well, look what showed up in the mail. The master cylinder. What I'm using here, this is a generic master cylinder that belonged to like the late 70s, early 80s Dodges, Valaris, that type of stuff. And you can get these in a number of sizes. This is like a... The one that you see, sometimes when you buy aftermarket race ones, this is the style one that you get, ones like these, okay? Uh, I went shopping around looking for them and looking for a certain size. Well, I'm running standard brakes. What I mean by standard brakes, I won't be running a booster, okay? I'm doing that for simple reason that I don't want... This here runs on vacuum off the engine, and it's just a nightmare if you've got too much cam or anything like that. Building vacuum, you need canisters and all that type of stuff, and, you know, I just... 
to me it's just Rob's horsepower, okay? There's more weight on the car, of course. Um, so I've always run in applications like this, always ran standard brakes. Some guys would do like an under the floor type brake system and stuff like that, but no, okay? I ran into that years ago with hot rods. It's tricky to bleed because your calibers are hard on your master cylinder. Um, then you got a hole in the floor that you got to deal with and you can't seal it up completely and it leaks and all that type of stuff. So I'm just going to do the standard on the firewall type thing. Now, when picking up these master cylinders, one of the big things is bore size, okay? Um, a lot of fellas have had troubles over the years of putting a standard brake on a car and find the brake pedal extremely hard, okay? The reason why you found it extremely hard is because of the bore size. If you go greater than like an inch and a quarter, one, even one inch sometimes will do it. Uh, the bore size will play effect on the, um, the feel of the pedal. The smaller the bore size, the nicer the feel you're gonna have, okay? It'll feel more like a power brake, okay? This one here, is a 24 millimeter bore size, which is about 15 sixteenths of an inch. It's less than an inch, okay? Um, I went hunting around for different ones. I have, I ordered the wrong one first, and that's still not here. For some reason, this one showed up first. I, I ordered this one again. Um, Try canceling the other one. The other one was uh, over an inch. It was an inch and an eighth, I think it was. And the problem I had when I was on Amazon looking for all this stuff, it give you a whole bunch of information, but it wouldn't give you this. So then I had to take the, door, the, the number that they supplied and then go online and do a search, look for specs on it. So I got all the specs on this, on this master cylinder online. So this is the one I'm going with. Now, I'm running this master cylinder, but what I have here is a conglomerate of a whole bunch of stuff. This is the original master cylinder off the Toyota. Okay, look how small that booster is. I guess it's a dandy little hot rod one. But I got this more or less for this here this piece here uh, I want this section here that's adjustable and it's got a nut on the end of it and stuff like this so I'm going to adjust the brake pedal height uh, and sometimes when you're doing the brake boosters uh, you may adjust them up too much and they'll actually um, stick on you sometimes I'll go over all that when I does the brakes coming on the car I've run into a lot of troubles with this stuff over the years and I uh, pretty well worked through all of them and I got a pretty good understanding of brake boosters and brake pedal assemblies on cars but what I got here, this here looks to be, I'm not quite sure, it's a shed pedal. Mm, don't know what exactly it's out of, it's a power brake system. A uh, single pedal could be out of a shed truck, I don't know, not 100% sure. Uh, this is a standard brake pedal setup out of an earlier 60s truck, I think. Um, 67 Chev or something like that, maybe even 58 earlier or earlier, I don't know, because Zibring is real all made of steel, right? So it's probably an early one, because a lot of these 70s and that came with the plastic brake booster, or brake light switch. This is the type of brake light switch I'm going to use, not this particular one here. I'm just going to use the standard brake light switch off the pedal, I'm not going to get too fancy with it. Um, between a lot of this here, I'm going to try to put something together that I can actually put in the car. Um, I need an assembly like this here to hang the pedal from. I need a spot that I can mount the booster to. Um, I need a pedal length, all that type of stuff. So I'm going to go now and play with this for a while, figure out, get some sort of um, idea of what I'm going to use. And when I get something figured out, I'll show you what I got done. Okay, so here's where I'm to with all this. See if I can remember what I got done here. I'm after fitting this in the car a couple of times. I haven't got the hole cut for the master cylinder yet, but I got this piece fitted in the car. Uh, this here section here is the firewall, okay? This was on an angle on this bracket here, so I had to cut it off and then straighten this up so this was 90 degrees of this here because the problem I had is this was going uphill in the car and it was really too high in the car. And I put this pivot point really high. Um, I was trying to get it so the master cylinder, I can get it as high as possibly I could get it in the engine bay but where this was on an angle this way here this would have to be low okay so this is what i did i just changed it and and done the angle on this here that's the first thing i done for this here and i still got to make a mounting brace from here down to the roll cage i'm going to show you all that now in a little bit um the pedal itself one thing i learned i did a kit car a number of years ago and what they used to do with them is they used to relocate the this this was a power brake system that was off of something. It was something with power brakes because it had the four holes in it. And what they do is they lower the pivot point one inch. So that's all I did here is I drilled a new hole in the arm one inch below this one here. And just that way the master cylinder, I can move it all up 
and the arm, the distance from here to here is shorter now. It's not as long as it was, it's only shorter, so the throw is not as, not as long. Uh, what else was I done? Then I, then I sized it all up for mounting the master cylinder and got all that done. Then I turned around and set the pedal up. I had this set up in the car here, and I realized the pedal got to be straight up and down for me to have, be happy where the pedal is to in the car. And so that's why I got this rigger. This is perpendicular to this here, so it's pretty well where I think it should be. Uh, there's one issue with all this here that I'm going to show you here now. So I got this mounted upside down just to show you the problem that I'm going to have, one of the issues. I do think I have it solved and what I'm going to do with it. Um, I got the rod set up in the master cylinder here now. And I got, it, I got the, uh, this is the brake light switch. That is the stop. I'm going to have some sort of a stop on this end of here because if there's nothing here, this rod is going to fall out, okay? But I will be putting a stop on this here. All this is temporary, by the way. I haven't gotten on this finished yet. I want to get this all mechanically working to make sure that the function of it is then I'll fine-tune. I'm going to replace this here, get a spherical rod and everything for this end here. This is just something I made up to find out the length of the rod. It's just a bolt that I cut the end off of, okay? Um, let's see. Oh, yes. Right here is the firewall. So this firewall will be going straight down through here. Now here's the problem you're going to run into. Anytime you put a brake system in a car, one thing you always got to make sure is that you get the entire um, throw of the pedal. If you has this rod too short and sets up your pedal and you put your foot on the brake, and for argument's sake, here's the brake pedal here. That's it bottomed out, okay? If you set this car up so that your pedal only goes this far, You'll never get a brake pedal on it. You always got to have it so that it bottoms out in the master cylinder. That's bottomed out in the master cylinder now. And that's where you got to have it set up for when you're putting it in the car for bleeding brakes. Now, when you get a pedal on it, it'll only probably go as far as here. But the initial build, when you're building the pedal, you got to have it so that it'll actually bottom out in the master cylinder. Now, here's the problem you got. Here's where the firewall is to, in line with that deer. And you come up here, the pedal sticks out past it. Okay, this is outside the firewall. The firewall is roughly about here somewhere. If you're going along here, this is where the firewall will be, see? And I line it up with that pipe over here on the wall. And then when you push on the pedal, the pedal goes past it, see? So what I'm thinking I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to like put a, a, a relief in the firewall so this pedal can fall through there for bleeding purposes. Um, you know, I can probably adjust up the pedal and then readjust it again, but in the case of uh, you ever have brake fail or anything like that, you still you may have one part of the master cylinder still, and if your pedal can't go all the way to the floor, it probably won't grab it, okay? It won't grab the entire master cylinder. There will always be an issue with it. You always got to make sure that you bottom out. As you can see here, I'm bottoming out. That's the bottoming out in the master cylinder here, okay? Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm not going to worry about this right now. I'm going to take this over sizes up some more. I got to do some more fine tuning. I got to make a brace from here down to the roll cage, uh, drill a couple of holes in here so I can actually bolt this to the firewall so I can size up the pedal to make sure that the, I'm happy where the pedal is to in the car. Um, I already played around with it and had an idea and I said, yeah, that's pretty well close where I want it. So I'm going to take this all apart now and go over and start fitting it in the car. So here we are. I got it mocked up in place there, clamped down the firewall. And you can see where it's going to be too. And coming down on the other side of the column. I got a, a bit of leg room over here. I might move it over this way a smidgen. Just a small bit more. Got lots of room over on this side here for a gas pedal. Okay. And you can see where how high it's up off the floor and whatnot. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be it. That's gonna be our home. I'm gonna move it over a small bit and mark the holes and drill the two holes now I want to bolt this all together in the car With the master cylinder and everything on it so I can get a good look at how everything is done So I got the mount uh, Bolted into the firewall where usually where it's gonna go using the bolts from the master cylinder And I got that mount in place now what I got done is I got a piece of the old steering column And I took that there and I have to trim it up And that fits right over roll cage right here that's where that's going to sit like that. And eventually what I'll probably end up doing, I'll probably end up spot welding that on. Get that fit on there nice. And I'll end up spot welding that on across there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make up two gussets that'll come from here to here down here. I want to leave the back side of this open because I've got a brake light switch to deal with here, right? So I'm going to make up two little plates now that'll come down that'll fit this here and weld this plate here. That'll fit over the roll cage like so. 
and you can see that here. And I got these pieces of plate here that I just found over my scrap bin. I'm going to clean them up. And I'm going to trim them up now so they fit this nice. I want to have it as forward to this as I can because of the way it's shaped. And I'm going to build it so that this here will fit like so onto that there. And then I can weld that to that there. And this here can be welded to the bracket itself because I need the firewall. So I trimmed out the brackets. You can see now they'll fit around the pipe. And this here will go up and weld up. And this is what it'll go, how it will be mounted. Like so. And then what I'll end up doing then is poly along here. I'll drill a few holes and put a couple of spot welds down through here into the roll cage later on. But for now I'm just going to leave it like it is and just clamp it on. But I'm going to go ahead now and get that all spot welded in place. And get this one here installed as well. So here's what I come up with. This is the setup. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to weld all this up. And I'm going to clean it all up and get it ready so that I can start uh, putting it back in there. And that piece there will be finished. So here it is, it all cleaned up, all welded up, all one piece, had to modify this bracket a bit so I can fit that back on, and you can see now the way it's going to work for the brake light switch. I went ahead then, cleaned everything up, and I have uh, four holes down here, they will be spot welded onto the roll cage later on. Um, I turned around in and cut off anything I didn't need or any little brackets and just cleaned all the top. There was a piece up here, I removed it and I drilled another hole in this here just to give you another spot because I intend to spot weld three or four holes onto the firewall when it's all said and done. This will be a solid structure in the car. This will be a one piece unit. I'm not going to have a soak and come out. Um, it's just the whole point. I want to have the pedal as stiff as I possibly can and the firewall as stiff as I possibly can. So the point from here to here is going to where the firewall is going to get a strength to it, right? is off the roll cage. So I'm going to go ahead now and install this here and start sizing up a few other things. I think I got the pedal now figured out where that's going. I just got to now start figuring out steering column and uh, what beads I'm going to put in that firewall. So I got that all put in place there now. Quite happy with how everything fits and everything in there now. So I got the master cylinder put in place. Where that's two out here, I'm happy with that. I want it as high as I possibly get. It's going to be a bit tricky che checking the back fluid, but I'll manage, right? And uh, I didn't want to have it too low in the engine bay. And uh, but I got that straight away. Now I got to figure out a few things. I got uh, I'm back on the firewall again. I got to I got the firewall marked down there now. There's the two in there. You see, I got marks on that in there. That's where the pedal hits. So I'm going to have to go out through that. So I got to figure that out, and I got to figure out the steering column mount. So I'm going to go figure out some stuff for that now, and see what I come up with. So my plan here is now I'm going to start doing a piece for the steering column. Uh, this is the piece I cut out of the firewall. I'm going to reuse this. I need a piece about four inches wide. I don't know how long it's got to be, so I'm just going to cut all this off, this full strip here, have it out of the way. I want to make a piece that will fit in there, but I want lots of excess on the end of it, so that way I can fold a few folds, so then all i got to do is put two sides on it. So I'm going to go ahead now, trim this up, and get this marked out, so I can get this cut. And I'm going to work on figuring out where I'm going to put a hole to in it. For a column, I have a piece of the other column here that I want to fit through it. And when I get that figured out, then I can start figuring out angles. So let's get this cut out. So I got the metal cut out, four inches wide, and I turned around and I put a inch three quarter inch hole in the middle of it. It's off center a small bit because the column doesn't come through that hole inside the firewall. Now the hole in the firewall is a little bit bigger than four inches, I'm not too worried about it. I only made this at four and it's a little tiny bit less because I cut on the, the lines, so that's fine. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a bend in it right here, 
and abandon it about right here somewhere so that I can actually fit it into the car and figure out where these outer bends are going to have to be. Uh, it's a lot easier to do this. The biggest problem I have with all this stuff with this project here is that I really don't have a real plan because it's so hard to see and there's so many things going on in and around that firewall. I got to do it one step at a time and I'm just going to work it one angle at a time. So here's what I went and did. Sip a little bend on the two of them. And then I cut a section of it off one end. So let's go over and test fit that. Here's what I got done. You can see what I'm trying to achieve here now. I got this piece made up and I got to bend it. I took some bend out of it up here, straightened it up so I got a touch in the here. And I got a touch down here. I'm going to mark these now, these points here, and then bend them so it lays flat against the thing. I want this here to be able to get at this here. Because I got this piece here. I got to slide out over this here after the fact. And uh, I want to keep that so I can actually get at it, right? So I'll get that bent up some more. And there you have it. The other two bends put in. How simple that looks. So I'll trim all that off after the fact on top. I'm going to have this salt spot wells on the outside here. What I got to do now is build two sides for it. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a piece of metal and bend it over on 90 and have it so I can cut it in and slide it in there. So I got lots of excess up here and here because I want to have this like a, a square type unit that looks like a spot welded on. And I'm probably going to cut these back on a bit of an angle so it don't look go straight in. It'll go back on a bit of an angle, much the same as way everything else is. So I'll trim this all up and get a piece made up for that now and we'll get that piece made. So here's where I'm to. I just took a piece of metal and I just bent it over. Then I marked it along here, trimmed it up, I fit it in place, made sure that this and this stayed flat all the way around there. And then I start tack well and fit it in place. Now I'll finish welding all that up later on. But as you can see, it looks a lot nicer because the taper's back on an angle. It doesn't go straight back. And on both sides like so. What I'll do now is I'm going to trim this side up and do the same thing over here. So I'll make a piece now, get that made up, and get it welded on that side there as well. All I've done here so far is I measured this distance here and I measured it over here. And I drew a parallel line from here to here, right? and I marked that. Then I made this angle and this angle the same. I had to shorten this side a small bit, because uh, for this angle here to be the same as this angle, I had to cut part of the bottom off. Done the same thing up here. Made this angle and this angle the same. So I'm left with a piece now that looks like this. So it's cut off, okay? The lines bottom looks the same. Then I just found a scrap piece of steel I had there. Cleaned it off. I'm going to bend it over on a 90, or not on a 90. Just going to bend it over probably on a 45 to start with. And I'll start working from there and get it so it fits up against that. People talk about benches. I think you only need a spot about a foot square to work out of. And the rest of it is just storage. <laughs> I got that piece bent over. Uh, it's still not exactly where I wanted it to. And you lay that against that there like that now. It, the angle is still off a bit. So I'll dolly all that. And I'll mark this down here. Rough cut that out. So that'll fit like so. And I'll mark this here. And I'll trim off this section here. I'll cut that off there. And do the same down here. Cut that off here. So I just got two tabs on either end. So I cut off either end here. So it can actually fit there. There's two of them are going to be the flat side. Now I just laid this in place here. And then I marked this. With the marker. Now I'm not going to cut this right on the line. I'm going to come back probably an eighth of an inch. A little less than that or whatever and cut it off. I want a little bit of excess on the outside here. So I haven't got no uh, gaps running on that. If I try to cut it to fit right away. I'm not going to worry about it. Because you can see this one here. got the same thing done. I can grind that all down to make that fit nicer later. So I'll do the same thing here. I'll get that trimmed up. And I'll start fitting that together. Now I'm after trimming this. Dollying it. Trimming it. So I can get it to fit there half these. Not worried about it fitting all these edges up here. I'll worry about all that later. All I'm worried about is getting the fit nice here and you fit it nice here. Down here you can see it opens up a bit. I gotta tap that in. I had to do the same on the other side. I'm gonna try tacking it here, up in that corner, and back here. And that way then I'll start working the panel to fit that there. So I'm gonna start fitting all that together now and get that welded up.
So that's basically it. See me, I clamp both ends of it. I got it set up here now so that it's all flat and level across the bottom and the top. Well, that's the bottom there and that's the top. And I had to tap it in the corners here. That corner there had to be tapped in because the way it's shaped. Okay. And I got tack well in place. So that's all ready now. I'm going to go ahead now and get that all welded up so I can get started on the grinding part of it. And there it is all welded up and cooled off. As you can tell, I put a lot of heat into that. I was just trying to get nice uh, beads on the inside there. So I can grind them off. I'm just going to grind them off now with the die grinder. So all I'm going to do with them there and grind all these flat. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all dressed up. Here it is, all grinded up. I didn't grind everything off the back side, but I must leave some of that there for strength. Okay. So everything is done there. Now you saw me using all I done in here. I said I just used a grind, dog grind around. I can really get carried away with this and dress that right up there. I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, you see me using this dog grinder here. The reason why I use that one there is this poor old puppy, the bear wings got us up here. Anyway, the bearing's gone in the end of it there, and it's set to slow down, so I had to go fix that up. But that's all I used, and I used the tip one, right, just to clean it all up. That's all I ever does for my inside edges. I welded it inside, welded it outside, and I grinded it all off. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to put some tape along here, and I'm going to trim all this off so I can get it down to a size that I can actually use for a panel. I did some measure from this side here and used tape, and just doubled it off on either side of it there. And all I'm going to do now is just cut the outside of this all off. And I'll probably round out these edges a bit. Just to give it, dress it up a bit. And I'll have that panel done. And there you have it. I rounded out the edges here. Cut it all off. Trimmed it up. And what I'll do now is I'll spot weld this in along here. That'll be spot welded on. It'll be just look like a panel put in the, the rig itself. Now my steering column. Got a spot. I can put that this piece that could slide on over that there. And be held in place. So... That's it for that. Now it's time to move on to the master cylinder, which I've run into some troubles with, and i got to figure it out. So here I have the entire brake pedal assembly all assembled, okay? This is the piece that I made that goes underneath the dash, the pedal, the rod is here, and the booster is bolted in place. The firewall will be right here along the section here, okay? Um, I was having a problem uh, where I was having this pedal going so far forward to the bottom out in the master cylinder that I was passing the firewall okay I was here the other day and I had a friend of mine drop by and we got into a discussion that now he's pretty knowledgeable on this type of stuff and a great appreciated Phil um, he started discussing all the geometry on this stuff now I am a visual person for understanding stuff explaining stuff to me doesn't always work okay I gotta see stuff to understand what's going on. He started talking about all the ratios of the pedal. Now I did a car a number of years ago where I drilled the pedal. Okay, I think the mistake I made here is that I drilled it in the wrong side. It was supposed to be drilled down here. But um, that was the mistake that I made. Because he started talking about the problem that I was having. And he kept saying lower the master cylinder. And I was trying to figure out lower the master cylinder. What do you mean by lower the master cylinder? And what he was saying is this rod... If I took this master cylinder and moved it down, so this pivot point was down here lower. In the case of this one here, the original hole, okay? And if that hole was no good, then I'd drill another one down here and lower it even more. Um, and this is what he was saying. This would change the ratio of the pedal, okay? So what, I got this set up like this here now so you can see it, actually what it looks like. But I'm going to flip it upside down and show you the problem that I was having. Now I had the whole system just clamped into the voice. I got it like this because it's upside down. It's a lot easier to do all this type of stuff. So you can imagine this master cylinder, everything is up the other way. I clamped down a piece of steel right here. This is my firewall line, okay? When you look at this here, this is what you see is the, far, the firewall. Now the brake pedal, when you put on the brake pedal like this here, uh, it's got to go down and it's got to 
bottom out in the master cylinder. That's what that's doing right there now. That's bottomed out in the master cylinder. The problem I got, if you look across here, is the pedal protrudes through the floor. There's where it ends. That's where the floor would end, and it goes past the floor. Okay? And the ratio, everything up here is different. So I took some measurements from here to here. Okay? And then I pushed it all the way down like so. And then I took a measurement from here to here. And them two measurements that I got, I turned around and I said, well, if I was to lower this the other way, like I had to raise it up here as lowering in the mass cylinder, and I'm going to put it in this hole here. Okay? So now you, you can see where the pedal's to here now, and you can see how far back this goes here, and how far back that goes from there. All I'm going to do is I'm going to change the location of the master cylinder and move it down to this hole here, and move the entire master cylinder down to this hole here, and bolt it all back together again. So here's what I got done. The master cylinder, I lowered it one inch, okay? I took the hole that I right here and I moved it up one inch. This is back in the factory hole, belonged to where this pedal assembly in the first place. That was the hole that I drilled earlier. Okay. Now everything is sat there now, and the pedal has a little bit of play in it to the whole point now from where it was before, as you can see. So the pedal is a little bit lower here, right? When I push the stop on, I adjust the stop in, it will push the pedal a bit more. So the distance here now is smaller than it was before. Well, here's the, here's the amazing thing. I push this in, it bottoms out. When I come up here, it doesn't pass through the firewall. See that? I changed the ratio, and that's what they call it. They always talk about 5 to 1, 6 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1. I could never understand it. There's a whole bunch of calculations that they talk about. Measure this distance and the angle here and the circumference here and all that type of stuff. This is visual, okay? I moved it up an inch. It doesn't, it doesn't pass through the firewall no more. I know now that my pedal stroke is shorter, okay? I worked it out, I think it's five and three quarters now is what it is. Um, and they say well, how it actually works is that for, if you move your pedal here, the, the base of your pedal, if you move that five inches, your rod right here should move one inch, okay? So if you move this in one inch into this here and measure the pedal here, That'll tell you what your ratio is. So I'm going to mark this here now, and uh, I'll give myself one inch. So I'll push this in one inch. I'll measure, take two measurements. I'll measure this one here now, and then I'll measure the second one when it goes in one full inch. Now I took a rough estimate, guesstimate, from about this edge here out to this point here, and it was nine and three-eighths of an inch from here to here. Down here I have a piece of one-inch tape, right? Now that lines up with this edge here, so when I push this rod into Farrah's here, that will be one inch of stroke there. So when I push that into there, and stop there, and I measure this distance up here, it's five and three eighths. So according to, this is my numbers here, five and three eighths and nine and three eighths. So my ratio on this panel will be four to one. Right? Because the difference between 938 and 538 is 4. Okay? So for every 1 inch down here, that'll move 4 inches. So it's 4 to 1 ratio. Uh, they say standard is usually 5 to 1. And the power brakes is 3 to 1. That's what they say. Uh, in, a, in a book that Phil got. So he was showing me that the other day. That's uh, quite interesting stuff. But with me, it's always been a... Um, I had to see it. Okay? You can explain it to me a hundred different ways. If I can't see it in my head, it's very hard. And when you start talking about angles and ratios and all that type of stuff, um, it's very hard. I can see this now. This is in front of me here now, and I figured I'd show it to you because some of you guys, some of you guys understand the whole thing, and you know, oh yeah, that's not a problem. That's great. But if you're like myself, you need a visual, and I figured this will help you out. So if you're ever playing around with a pedal setup and you're looking to get it so that it fits in the car. Um, just know that when you lower the pedal, your ratio will change, okay? So in the case of this one here, I had this up here, and I think it was like um, 7 or 6 to 1, I think it was, when it was up here, the ratio. And now i got to move down to 4 to 1, just by moving it down 1 inch, all right? It's amazing, right? So if you move that down another inch now, it'll make it even smaller. It's going to be too much. Because sometimes the fellows put pedals in cars, they can't get enough movement in the pedal. And, uh, or in the case of my, I've got too much pro. 
But now that I got that figured out, here's my next problem. I got a hole in my firewall. And I got to move the master cylinder down one inch. So what I'm going to do here, I've been thinking about is, I wanted to put some strength on this firewall here. I'm going to make an outer plating system here. And I'm also going to make an inner plate as well. That I'm going to sandwich into the panel to give that section strength. Because uh, right now that's only, you know, the sheet metal is on it. And by putting the plating system on it, it'll give it added strength. See, over here now, I'm right at the bottom of my pedal assembly. Okay? And uh, what I want to do here is that I want to add strength to this here. So I'm going to build a plating system that will go in the car in behind this here and I'll weld on. You've seen sometimes in some cars they got a unit that goes up underneath the dash. That's part of the floor that gives strength to all this. you got a lot of pressure on this when the pedal and everything's in the car. And whatever you can do to it to make it stronger, uh, it's probably best to do it. So this plating system I'm going to make out of probably 16 gauge metal. The outer side one I'm going to make it out of the 18 gauge that I'm always using it on because I'm just basically doing that to cover a hole. But I might put a couple of beads in it and make it look like a piece that was welded onto the firewall and just for strength. I got to find a way around this because I got to fill in that, fill in that hole is over there. And I got to relocate this down one inch. So I'm going to go ahead now and start building some stuff, brackets and stuff to fill up that hole and get this thing finished up. And there you have it. One butchered hole. I got it all moved down one inch. I'm not too concerned about it. Um, you know, it's she came factory with two locations mounted, so that's the way she's going to stay. <laughs> she had an options, right? Anyway, I'm going to bolt that master cylinder in now and just check it and make sure everything. I'm happy with it, and I'm going to start making them plates that I wants to put in there. And there it is, bolted up. One of the advantages of this, now i got no troubles getting at the back one anymore. Before, when it was too high up here, I could hardly get at that. You can get at that now pretty easy, right? So, and there's room there for my lines to come between here. Not an issue. And then in here, I've noticed that the brake pedal right now is a little bit lower than it was before in terms of where is that rest coming back this way, right? And when you push on it, that's where it bottoms out to. You can barely see it there. Bottoms out there. Right there, and I'm pushing down the firewall a little small bit. That's it. So it's all working good there now. But you can see now where it's mounted. Right here, you can see where the hole is too. I'm going to make a plating system to go up along here, come down, and go down to probably the top of the column piece. And I'm going to put a lip on this side of it here. And that's going to be welded onto the firewall, and that'll be welded to that piece there. And then I'm going to do another one on the outside that will actually fill up that hole, that mistake that I made. I don't make mistakes, do I? No. <laughs> but fix that problem, that mistake that I made, that and recalculate and readjust that front end piece. And I'll make up a piece for that. So I'm going to go haul out some steel here now and start trimming up some stuff and making two plates. So I dug out a piece of uh, 16 gauge that I got here. I'm going to use this for the piece on the inside. I cut a larger piece of it off. I have strips of these here that's probably about three feet long. And I just cut off about a foot of it. Uh, I got to put a hole in this and mount the master cylinder to it, all that type of stuff. But instead of building the panel first to fit in there and then drilling the holes in the center, I'm going to start in the middle. I'm going to drill a hole uh, for the master cylinder to fit in and have it so that it bolts on. It's going to be too long here, too wide here, and too high here. That way I know when I have the hole drilled, I'll be able to center this out where I want to put it. If I cut this to size and bend it up and then try to drill the hole, I've noticed that if I'm off on one side of my mark, that it throws everything out of whack. So I'm going to start off with the hole first and give myself lots of room. And then I'm going to center it off the hole to either side. So that way uh, the master cylinder sits where I want it to sit in this plate and I'll build a plate put all my bends in it after the fact. So I'm going to go ahead now. I marked up. I need about three and a half inches here. I'm going to give it four. I only need like two and a half inches here. I'm going to give it four here. I'm just going to drill a hole, mount my mass cylinder, drill it to the holes that it's going to mount to, and then I'm going to start folding this up and cutting this off to fit in the car. So I got the hole drilled, and then I went and laid the brake booster in place and marked two other holes. I drew a 90 degree off this one here, this is my 90 degree here and here. 
and I drew across that so my center line was in the same place across there so that was square that way. Then what I went and did, I started building out from that. I figured out how wide this pedal assembly was. Okay, I laid that place and I measured it here. How high, how far down from the, from the center line this to the bottom I needed, how far from the center line this to the top I needed. And I just drew it out, okay? I want to put a lip on either side of this here, bent up. That's all I'm doing it, and then that's going to mount it underneath the firewall. This is the way a lot of them were from factory. When you looked at a factory car and you got up underneath the firewall, there was a heavy piece of plate put in there that just had edges bent on it. That was it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll cut that out. So I got the piece all cut out, and then I went ahead and I marked the edges where I want to put the bends to bend them up on a 90. But the first thing I'm going to do here first is I'm going to clean all it up, and grind all the slag and off that, and get that ready, and then I'll put the two bends in that. And that piece will be done. And there you have it. Put a couple of bends in it. And that's got a lot of strength in it. There were, that was pretty tricky to bend. I used this my little bender for it. But I managed to get it bent. That's 16 gauge. And you can see now how strong that is. Okay. Like if you ever look up underneath the dash of a production car. You will see a plating system like this here with a lip on it. And that's the whole reason behind it. Because this gives you strength. Okay. This will be in underneath the firewall now, and then this here will be mounted on top of it like so. And that's the way that will be in, in the car. So that's the inside plate done. Now I just got to figure out something to make for the outside plate. To fill up the hole that I mistake I made earlier. <laughs> that thought had to be as heavy as this, so. See what I can come up with there now. There it is, just a simple little plate. This one here will be mounted on the outside to cover up that hole. It will also give a bit of strength. And I'll give a bit of a look on the outside so it's not just a plain flat firewall. Again, I don't like like smooth finish flat firewalls. Was never into that. I always like the mechanical look of everything. And that's just me, okay? I like this, I prefer this, or some people probably say, you know, smooth that all out and weld that in solid and make it whatever. No, I'm not gonna have. Uh, this is a simple fix for a mistake that I made, and I kind of like it. I was gonna cut a piece out. I put a couple of beads in it, and you, it's hard to, to bead the 16 gauge, okay? But And I just soon use this here, and I've seen them with these here raised lips on the outside in the engine bay as well. So I'm just going to leave this at this now, and I'm going to bolt this all together now, and show you what it looks like. There's the plating system on the inside here with the pedal. I realized I had to make the rod a little bit longer now. I gotta build a rod for this and I've been trying to figure out what length it gotta be before I builds it. Uh, so I'll just play around with it. Now where I added the two pieces of metal, one on the inside, one on the outside, the rod had to be made a little bit longer. But when you put the pedal right to the floor, it touches, it bottoms out before it hits the floor. You can see it there. So, which is good. Oh, that's fine. Uh, the plating system is there. Now that plate will be welded onto the firewall there. That brace will be welded onto the plate. And this bar here will be welded onto the roll cage here. So it will be a permanent unit. I'm not going to get into that right now. But I'm very pleased with where it was to. Pedal location. All that. Out here you can see what I got done. You see the way it just sits on the firewall there. That piece there will also be welded onto the firewall. I'm going to be doing it right now. And add strength and just you know a bit of uh, rigidity and uh, to me kind of like adds to the firewall adds something else to it it doesn't look flat anymore it's got some sort of structural to it you know so that's where the master cylinder goes and it's something that you probably would see around it you can get pretty fancy with that if you want to but that's just simple and I like to have the little round edges on the top and the bottom right gives it a little bit of strength okay it's been a lot of work I've after getting covering on this one here. This here was probably one of the biggest jobs on this car. Uh, everything in this car I thought out and I said to myself, okay, this is what I'm going to do here. This is what I'm going to do here. I couldn't figure this out in my head because I didn't know what a firewall was to. I didn't know where the pedals were going to be to. It was something I had to get into and I had to figure out. Same with that steering column. This here is a big uh, completion that I got done here. I'm amazed now that I'm happy with everything is too. It's it was a big undertaking, is all I can say. Trying to figure all the geometry out, figure out where everything's gonna go, or how high is the master cylinder gonna go? How far down you know in is the master cylinder gonna go? Where's the brick firewall gonna go? Is it gonna be in here? Is it gonna be out here? Whatnot? The pedal, is it gonna be on this side of the steering column? Is that gonna be on that side of the steering column? These are all the things that go through your head when you're trying to build this stuff up. 
And, you know, trying to figure all that out is very hard. The only way you can do it is to actually get at it and do it. Now that I got that all done, I can go on now and get this firewall ready to permanently install in the car. Um, I want to put a lip along here, a couple of beads here, and figure out. I might do something over here. I don't know. I might just leave it alone, right? But uh, I'm going to leave that in another video. This one's getting pretty long here now. Um, we got a big undertaking completed here now. We got the steering column piece made. That will be spot welded into the, uh, into the firewall as well, right there. And all the pieces that I got made and the mass cylinders mounted, the geometry's all swinging right. I'm happy where the pedal is too. So, anyway, I'm going to leave this one here. I hope the tips are good. Until next time.